Uh, Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskin is joining us now. And Bobby, you have been closely monitoring what is now shaping up to be a major hurricane. Yeah, oh yeah, Cat 4. Hurricane Center in their latest briefing said it could possibly reach Cat 5. Mm -hmm. It's just so many questions right now. On the sandbags, I did want to mention, Remember, it's best to put a tarp down up against the door if that's what you're preparing. Put that down first, that's watertight. Put the bags on that. That will hold it and really help to protect the water from getting in there. All right, here are the numbers right now. As you can see, 85 mile per hour winds. The latest track has nudged to the north just a little bit. Uh, but look at those numbers right there, 145 mile per hour winds. That would be during the day on Tuesday. Tuesday nights approaching us. It looks like we're dealing with this on Wednesday. There will be some wind shear that comes down from the north and the west here that's going to be pushing on this. And because of that, we think it will weaken a little bit. And, and even this forecast may change a little bit. But, uh, but uh, there's so many up, questions up in the air right now that we still don't know exactly where this is going to go. We do know it's been rapidly intensifying throughout the day today. Pressure's down, wind is up. Movement's now to the east at around 7 miles per hour. Recon's out there right now. We've got one plane flying around the situation, another one flying, well, two flying in the storm. That data that they get goes into the forecast models, and that makes these models, this is the European, or this is actually the GFS, that makes them better. And we should get a better idea, and the models should start to agree with each other more as we get going over the next day or two. This is Tuesday at 8 a.m right off of Cozumel, right off of the northern Yucatan. Then by Wednesday at 9 a.m., the GFS has it well offshore. So the time in one of the runs that we have here locally is doing the same thing, very slow. And then a landfall, not until, this is the very latest run, just came in. Look at that. It's up towards Crystal River, up towards Hernando County with a landfall Wednesday night. The timing has completely slowed on this. This is the European forecast model. We'll get another one of these. This is Wednesday at 8 o'clock in the morning. And then landfall would be Wednesday evening along Tampa and the hurricane center is faster than that. So there's a lot of disagreement here in the forecast model. So what we want you to know is that we're looking at where it goes on landfall because that's where you're going to get the worst surge to that point and points to the south of it. But what I want to show you right here, the yellow, the orange and the red, those are the hurricane force winds. This is going to be similar to Helene. In fact, that instead of a, a storm this big, you're going to storm this big. And so everybody's getting wind right? Not everybody's getting water. You can see it right there. That's where we have it moving on shore. This would be Wednesday afternoon. But look at that orange. That's 60 mile per hour winds sustained with gusts in the 80s. Look at that covers almost from Crystal River down to Venice and Vamo all the way out to Highlands County, all of Polk County, right? Everybody's going to get some wind. And depending on exactly where it goes, we'll see who gets the highest, obviously, if it's around the center. So if you're asked to evacuate, please please do so. They're doing it for a reason. This is just the latest forecast from the Hurricane Center, and you can see they have it coming in right here. All right, they had it coming in down here, but you get the idea. If the storm comes in here, because of the way that the winds flow around and counterclockwise, you get the worst surge right here. You're going to get winds like this up here, so it blows a lot of the surge out, although we got to watch part of the bay. Okay, that will change. I would love to say that that's exactly what's going to happen. I wouldn't want it to happen there, but that's going to change. And that's what we're watching very closely over the next couple of days. We don't know exactly where this is, and that's why you're going to get evacuations for Pinellas, for Hillsborough, for Manatee and Sarasota County. There's the rain. We're all going to get a rain, but I think the heaviest rain will be up to the north. Now for a little bit more on specifics as much as we can. Here's meteorologist meteorologist. Did I say that right? Colleen Campbell. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Bobby. All right, so Hurricane Milton, what you need to do right now, it's prep time. So uh, when the early impacts that we'll start feeling would be Tuesday late and then moving into Wednesday, we're expecting that landfall. So we're expecting for the impact, tropical storm and hurricane force winds surge, especially south of the storm. And again, we're fine tuning that exact area. But what you need to do right now, stock up on those hurricane supplies and obey those evacuation orders. We already have a current evacuation in place for Manatee and Pinellas, Manatee uh, mandatory evacuation zone A and B, also all mobile homes, and this applies to everybody, but by 2 p.m. they want you out of there for Manatee County. Pinellas, uh, mandatory evacuation for those long-term hospital uh, facilities, as well as assistant living, and Anna Maria Island, they want you out by noon. Moving into Pasco County, a mandatory evacuation by Monday, tomorrow, 10 a.m. That includes zones A and B, all mobile homes. And again, mobile homes are covered under all of these counties, low-lying and flood-prone areas.
areas. There is a voluntary evacuation by 10 a.m. tomorrow, and that includes evacuation C only. Also, if you are somebody that's registered special needs uh, and anybody that's vulnerable to power loss, they are, of course, asking you to evacuate as well. Satellite and radar here locally, we have a lot of moisture in our atmosphere. That can lead to flash flooding issues if we have some hefty downpours here over the next 24, 48 hours ahead of Milton alone. And then, of course, once Milton does get here, we are expecting a lot of rainfall across our area. Right now, we are seeing some heavier rain down by Port Charlotte, Sarasota. If we look at our flood watch, don't forget that is an effect. Uh, it started this morning and it goes until Thursday morning. We do have an excessive rainfall outlook for Wednesday. So what this basically means is this is your probability of these areas exceeding that flash flood guidance within 25 miles. So this area highlighted right here has a 40% seeing that excessive rainfall that would exceed uh, guidance for flash flooding within 25 miles of this point. So as you get into the yellow section, that drops down to a 15% chance. But don't forget, that's within 25 miles of a point. So if you're on that borderline, you could have that higher uh, flash flood expectation if you are basically for Tampa Bay. On Futurecast here, this is our uh, high res model. You can see most of that rain hanging out around Manatee and Sarasota County for tonight. Into tomorrow morning, most of the rain looks like it wants to be concentrated across the East Coast. But again, we have plentiful moisture in our atmosphere and any downpour is not doing us any service as far as it comes to uh, evacuating. So again, the evacuation orders will still pop up. Those are just the first initial ones that we have right now. Make sure you know your zone and you don't have to evacuate far. You don't have to go 100 miles away. Just 10 miles away, uh, your best situation here would move northward. Of course, we will have some hurricane watches warnings as well as storm surge watches and warnings later on tonight. Your seven day forecast, we have a weather impact alert set for tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday and the first half of Thursday. But again, this is subject to change based on the timing of Milton.